Okay, I got the block all prepped, ready to set the bearings in, and drop the crank on. Have the oiling holes. Yeah. Yeah, three cylinder, three on the tree. Using the block plug kit, we sealed up all of the water and oil passages on the 1967 big block. Okay, we've got our oil pump and the pickup. Got that mocked up. What we're gonna do is check the pan and see what the depth is between this and the inside of the pan. So we'll put some clay on there, put the pan on see what our depth is, make sure that this isn't touching the bottom of the pan or that's not too far away from the pan. So let's mock it up and check, and then we'll tack this baby into place once we have it in the right position. Now that the pan's on, change out the canister with our adapter for a screw-on filter. The high performance 291 casting numbers, the last three digits, can be found on the bottom side of the cylinder head underneath the intake ports. Note our high performance rec port heads also feature provisions for guide plates and screw-in rocker shreds for an adjustable valve train. Machine work to the cylinder heads featured a light surfacing, valve job, and a fresh set of valves. We've got the head on now. We're putting the rocker studs and guide plates on. Take a look. Got Teflon sealer because some of these go into the into the intake port. A couple of them do, a couple of them don't. We'll tighten all those down. We've got adjustable guide plates so that we can adjust the position on the rocker. Let's get it going. Yeah, getting ready to fire up. After trying once again to repair the leaky 291 castings, we replaced them with a set of 858s. They were the same rec port head, the same chamber size, same valve size. So we fixed our leak and reassembled the motor. On the first build, we installed a comp flat tappet performance cam, but for this go around, we replaced it with an Elgin reproduction of the factory L78 cam. After installing the Elgin cam, we installed the 858 cylinder heads using 1037 Felpro head gaskets, and then we swapped over the valve springs from the 291 heads. The 858 heads were treated to factory guide plates and 716 rocker studs. Okay, got all our rockers, got oil on everything. You can see. Now we can install them on the rocker studs, tighten them down. This time we're going to use poly locks because those pinch nuts, yeah. Hard pass on those. Let's get them installed. So now we need to go in and lash all the valves. We're gonna lash all these at 20, 20 or so cold. 
After we do that, we can install the intake. The moment of truth has arrived. It is ready and up on the dyno. We've got our Holly carburetor, MSD distributor, and factory intake. A Mazir electric water pump, inch and seven eighths hooker long tube headers, and collector extensions. What do you say? Let's fire this baby up. Okay guys, here it is, the results of our 375 horse 396, the actual dyno results. Did it make 375 horsepower or did it make 425 horsepower as it was rated in the Corvette? And the reality is, once tuned, this combination produced 422 horsepower and torque is actually up 428 foot pounds of torque but there's more to the story than that because we actually did a little bit more tuning kind of did a hero run where it was maybe leaner than we would want it to be um we this this we leaned this thing out to about 13.1 or 13.2 you can see it actually had a negative effect on low speed power because we just did this with jetting so maybe if we worked out a good combination and i had much more dyno time we could get both of those but it made quite a bit more power it made uh, 434 horsepower. Peak torque was down to 423 foot-pounds of torque. But let's talk about this. Does this mean that the 425 horsepower rating is more accurate than the 375 horsepower rating? And we need to look at the following things that I'm going to show you. In fact, we could get into that right now. That way we have all of the data. Let's take a look and see what happened. Here's what happened when we put stock exhaust manifolds on it. We had a dramatic drop in power with the stock exhaust manifolds. So the stock exhaust manifolds were run with two and a half inch pipes, basically, just extensions off of the stock exhaust manifolds, no mufflers or anything. So kind of an optimized stock exhaust manifold test, if you will. And power was down to less than 400 horsepower, 398 horsepower. Peak torque was down to 420 foot pounds of torque. So we could see the stock exhaust manifolds had a big effect on power. And that leads me to my next discussion. So you have to ask yourself, 425 horsepower, the rating in the Corvette would have been with a 780 Holley carburetor, which even though ours was a 750, I know the 780 guys are going to say this one would make more power. I'd like to see somebody come in with a 3310 or a 780 Holly carburetor that was a factory original carburetor and make more power than this Ultra XP. I don't think it's going to happen because if you look at the openings of the base plates, it's very, very similar. In fact, it might be exactly the same. The flow rate of this XP is going to be at least as much or more than that 3310 style carburetor is because that has a choke horn and all that stuff on it. So you'd be hard pressed to, get, to do better with that older style carburetor than this one. I think this is a better carburetor. 
Uh, you would also have the factory distributor. You would also have, as we saw here, the factory exhaust manifolds and all of the accessories on there because they, when they run them on the engine dyno, they would at least run them with the water pump and maybe all the accessories connected. So that would be my point. <laughs> I think actually the 375 horsepower rating is probably closer to the truth than the 425 horsepower rating is. I still feel that the 425 rating was done as a marketing thing for the Corvette because that's kind of what the Cobras were making back then. And they were about to introduce the 427 that would actually make 425 horsepower even with the stock exhaust manifolds. But let me know in the comments what you guys think. What do you guys think? Is there still controversy here for what it makes? Run the way that we run it, the way that we ran it. The four, the uh, this was actually a 402, so it would have been a 1970 version. It had the it had a factory Elgin camshaft in it, reproduction of the factory cam. It had the 11 to 1 pistons in it. It had the rec port closed chamber heads. It had the factory uh, intake manifold on it. We had a 750 carburetor, but we also had long tube headers. We had a Mazir electric water pump. We ran the thing colder than they probably would have back in the day, and we were able to get 430 plus horsepower out of this thing. But in my opinion, that's an optimized tune. And I still feel, let me know what you guys think in the comments, that a 375 horse 396 in its factory condition probably was the real number. I'm Richard Older. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.